Over the last 35 years or so, Mario has done a whole lot more than just some platforming and throwing some parties. He and his crew have dived into a ton of sports as well. Baseball, soccer, you know, golf and tennis, even basketball, sometimes with Square Enix characters, sometimes with real life humans. It's kind of crazy all across the board and I thought it would be fun to take a look at every single time these games have happened. But before we get to that, I have a message from today's sponsor, Keeps. I get it, you know, sometimes you watch my videos and you think to yourself, you know what, his hair... Did you know that statistically, two out of three males by the time they hit 35 suffer from hair loss? It's all a ticking time bomb for whether or not this glorious mane of mine sticks around, and that's a level of uncertainty that I am not happy with. Adding all of this YouTube stress on top of it certainly doesn't make things any easier. Well, thankfully, Keeps is the easiest way to prevent hair loss, a subscription service that delivers the goods straight to your door. All of the different treatment plans you have on offer are personalized and doctor recommended and include a year of unlimited messaging with experts medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to ensure that you can keep your hair goals a reality. And also, all of the testimonies show that within just a few months, the changes are immediately noticeable. Sounds like to me this is a pretty good deal. Well boy, that information was handy and useful. I'll be sure to keeps it in the forefront of my mind so I, I never forget it. Can we run that back? Hair loss starts with Keeps, so to get 50% off of your first order, go to Keeps.com slash Antude, or click the link down in the description below. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Antude. And now, on to the main event. Alright, so you mean to tell me this poorly Italian man has not only been adventuring for his entire life, but on top of that, he's also not only played but mastered like a dozen sports as well? I don't know man, this series is definitely not one to have realism as its strong suit, but this is a bit too unbelievable for me. Mario Sports Games, for whenever you think the red guy and his ragtag group of friends are doing just a bit too much jumping, princess saving, or even car racing. For almost as long as Mario has ever been around, he's been picking up some form of sports accessory, an appropriately themed ball, and honing his skills in a handful of new hobbies. And yes, I can hear you now, yeah of course, this all started back on the Virtual Boy with Mario's Tennis. No! You now may be taking a trip further back in the time machine to the NES to plain old black box golf. And I mean, this looks like Mario, right? It has to be. Well, while Nintendo did once consider this to be Mario, that would later be retconned with the Japanese Wii exclusive Captain Rainbow, which gave us Osan, who in this game is the washed up old golfer from that NES classic. And in this game he like, r regularly scratches his golf balls that he stuffed in his overalls? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I understand why this game didn't get localized now. But yes, to answer the convoluted trivia question, naturally this leads us to the actual originator of Mario Sports games... Game & Watch Donkey Kong Hockey. Of course, you must have known about this one, it's a gem. Point being, this whole wide world of Mario Sports is a lot more diverse and vibrant than I thought it was gonna be before starting to work on this video. You know, you're probably thinking, oh, you got a couple of golf games, some tennis games, and then just a few other stragglers here or there, but no. I can assure you that is not the case. As someone who has now played every single game in this side genre, it is one of the most inconsistent side genres in this franchise. And I am excited to go through all of them. I figured it would be fun. It wasn't always fun, but I thought it was gonna be. So, let's, let's get on to it. Mario Golf and Mario Tennis. When you hear the phrase Mario Sports, there's a good chance that this is where your mind would wander to. And it makes sense, with only a few exceptions, if a Nintendo console existed, one of these wasn't too far behind. All of the Mario spin-off hype and buzz tends to hover around Mario Kart, and that makes sense too. But in my opinion, golf and tennis were usually just as big of a deal. Usually. It didn't really start off that way, of course. I did just mention Mario's tennis on Virtual Boy. Yeah, M Mario's tennis. This one was his. It's just a boring standard tennis game with far too much red. What a surprise. It's essentially one step below Ultra Smash, honestly. But golf did have an early equivalent as well with NES Open Tournament Golf for, brace yourself, the NES. Nintendo may have been able to retcon Mario out of black box golf, but no matter how much time passes, they won't be able to do it with this one. I mean, that's... 
That's him. No mistaking it. Can't, can't change it here. No extra Mario, brother. That's him. Even Donkey Kong shows up. I mean, I, I think? I think that's him. He speaks perfect English here. Maybe this is the DK that would then go on to become Cranky Kong. I don't know. I'm not really sure where this fits on the timeline. It is an 8-bit golf game, so keep your expectations in check, but honestly, it's actually pretty good, even nowadays. It's certainly pretty difficult to be precise with your shots, but the sprite work is really nice, the soundtrack is catchy, mechanics are solid. The USA outfit that Mario has in this game would even be brought back in recent years with Smash Ultimate, Mario Odyssey, and even Super Rush. That's so neat. But, as we got deeper into the N64 generation, it was clear that something would need to change if Mario were to maintain relevance in the sports field. We don't want simple old golf and tennis games with Mario in them, we want Mario games with golf and tennis in them. If that makes any sense. We already had options for normal sports games. If you wanted to play as a realistic Tiger Woods in a boring realistic golf course while avoiding lame realistic scandals, you already had those games to choose from. I want to golf with the Goombas. And thus, a champion entered the arena. Camelot. Oh, wait, sorry. Camelot! <laughs> yeah, yeah, he says it way better than I ever could. By this point in the company's timeline, Camelot definitely had a track record, but clearly it was their work with Hot Shots Golf on PS1 that was enough for Nintendo to trust them with their top IP. I can't say too much about that series as a whole, I've only ever played the first one, but hey, it's the only one that Camelot actually worked on and, uh, wow, it's, it's pretty uncanny with just how similar it ended up being to Mario Golf 64. You can see the framework all over this one. And right out of the gate, the rebirth of Mario Sports hit the ground running. Opening cutscenes for both golf and tennis. We start off being greeted by the cast, enjoying their day and getting into mischief. And man, I just, I love this so much. It's pretty rare to get full-blown cutscenes with any of these characters. It injects so much personality into a genre where you really wouldn't expect it. The human characters start showing up. Uh, Plum, who many of you have seen in the Smash Brothers Melee trophy. Uh, this is where she made her debut. What do you mean you forgot about Plum? This is also where we got our first whiff of Waluigi, a character so many people love for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I never really got the massive appeal. I apologize to the Waluigi fanbase out there. I'm a bit more of a uh, Blue Mario guy myself. He made his debut in this game too, and nobody talks about him. He's the true underdog. But this level of charm is exactly what these games needed. When I said we wanted Mario games with sports in them, this is what I meant. This translates to the gameplay too. For both golf and tennis, we do have options to of course play a standard game with normal rules, but if you dig into the menu a little bit more, you can play tennis with item boxes in Bowser's Castle, go for a round of golf on Yoshi's Island. Golf 64 has a mini golf mode that we haven't seen in any of the other Mario Golf games and I don't know, I always liked it. Or partake in a ring challenge in both sports. It's such a fun concept for an additional challenge and it's simply great having more stuff to do. This whole ring idea works in both sports perfectly. And yes, it helps that the arcadey vibe is perfect here as well. Everything is so snappy and punchy. The soundtracks to these games are incredible too. And man, going back to that cast of characters. I mean, we got Plum, Maple, H Harry. I'll give them credit. They got their one game, they got their money and they got out. That's, that's true goals. And if you loved those opening cutscenes, well, that charm carries into the whole animations in golf and the trophy celebrations in tennis. Dude, the, the trophy celebrations, these are like the best part of the game. Short clips of Mario characters just doing things with a trophy in frame. I, I love this. Wario talks like a damn Pokemon in his. That's, that's amazing. I am a Nintendo fan, therefore I am easy to please. On the GameCube though? Oh boy, this is where Camelot ascended to a higher plane. Mario Golf, Toadstool Tour, and Mario Power Tennis. Damn, these games are good. At their core, as you would expect, they are more of the same, but they look better, sound better, they run buttery smooth. And again, we got absolute godlike opening cutscenes that basically tell their own short stories at this point. All of these years later, they have not lost one ounce of entertainment value. They are so good. Hell, Power Tennis' opening even has a blooper reel. When do games have blooper reels? I want more of them. Everything about the presentation in these games is on point. However, uh, Bowser's voice? Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit off.
I don't know. It sounds it sounds like it was me screaming into a microphone, but no, that's 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 in the game. It's all of the additional stuff that makes these games so special. Mechanically, there's been some improvements. Like now in golf, there's additional inputs for shots, giving you finer control than you had before. And tennis now has the power shots that add some more flair to your player on both an offensive and defensive front. And plus, PD Piranha is playable in this one. I just appreciate people trying new hobbies. And then for options, we have additional challenges like the treetop Congo canopy course in golf, where every hole is par three and hell, and then all of the crazy gimmick courses in tennis. I don't know why Camelot went this hard, they didn't need to, but there are so many wacky things to do in Mario Power Tennis, it's amazing. In 64, we had fancy courts that uh, threw PNGs of Mario characters on them and called it a day, but here, not only do we have special courts that all slightly change the mechanics, like having this goo on Isle Delfino, or ball direction changing arrows in the WarioWare themed factory court, oh my god, WarioWare got a reference in something, that's really cool, but each one even has an associated minigame in an entirely different menu. You get to paint Mario's face, avoid all of these ghosts in Luigi's Mansion, god, I love, I love this game so much. Toadstool Tour didn't go as wacky as Power Tennis did, the imbalance and creativity between both is honestly pretty severe, but you would still be hard pressed to do much better when it comes to either of these two sports. And of course, shout outs once again to the fantastic trophy victories in tennis and the whole completion reactions in golf, still really really good. But oh, you may be saying to yourself, what about the Game Boy versions? Released alongside the N64 and GameCube games, we got Mario Golf and Tennis on the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance as well. The simply titled Mario Golf and Tennis on the Color, and Advance Tour and Power Tour on Advance. And hell, not too long after Mario Tennis GBC released, we even got Snoopy Tennis released exclusively for the console as well. Tennis fans and Game Boy Color fans were eating pretty good in 2001, that's all I'm saying. If you wanted that tried and true gameplay experience but in the palm of your hands, well, you got it here. Both consoles, both sports, the core experience is all here. But as you already know, yes, each of these games also comes with a fully fledged RPG mode as well. I mean, hey, it was the reason to play these games in the first place. As a human character of your choice, you attend a golf or tennis academy in the effort to rise the ranks, gain experience points to put into specific traits and better yourself, and eventually go one-on-one -on -one against... <gasps> Red Luigi himself. And these modes are simply amazing. Don't get me wrong, it's not like we have these grand sweeping RPG adventures with all the twists and turns and varied gameplay mechanics you would expect in the genre. This isn't Golf Story we're talking about here, but they're still really good. I was just happy to talk about Golf Story. I love the idea of using a blank slate of a character as a means to sort of immerse yourself in this academy. Bullying the other students and making them question why they even signed up in the first place, it's so satisfying. I will say though, uh, the cast of characters in these academies it's filled with some of the biggest nobodies I've ever seen. I could be wrong, but I don't think anybody's gonna be coming back to Mario Tennis here after a few years and they're gonna be like, Oh man! It's that guy! They would even go on to make some of these characters playable too. Oh boy, I can't wait to play as... Uh... Uh... Flit. Should have taken the golf superstar Plum and put her in the Tennis Academy. That would have made a lot more sense, we would still be seeing the character to this day. You, you goofed up, Nintendo! You, you goofed up! You put your money on Flit, and no one cares about Flit. The champions in these two games are pretty cool though. Each of the two academies basically has a few boss fights that you have to get through before getting to the big Italian man at the very end, and I don't know, I always kind of saw them as like an Elite Four from Pokemon equivalent. I like that for this. And the icing on top of all of this, you could even transfer your characters to the console versions. You don't really see too many people talking about this feature nowadays because with the re-releases of the N64 games, people being nostalgic about the GameCube games, it's kind of just fallen by the wayside. But thanks to the N64 having a transfer pack, as well as the GameCube having the GBA link cable, you were able to take your characters, put them on the big screen, and it was so, so damn cool. Dude, the fact that your human character has their own trophy animation in tennis, that's amazing. That's me. That's me getting a trophy from Red Luigi. Ah! Oddly enough though, when we get to Power Tour, the final game of this Game Boy bunch, it's the only one where you can't transfer your characters to the console game. And there was never any explanation why either. It just kind of wasn't here now. Uh, please buy the game anyway, I guess? 
Remember when Nintendo was hyping up Smash 4 and they said the handheld game and the console game was gonna combine together in some sort of magical way? I was kinda hoping for something like this. Uh, it wasn't as cool what we ended up getting, uh, so all I'm saying is get these games on a Game Boy service for Nintendo Switch Online, bring the connectivity back, and we're golden, Nintendo. It's a simple thing. Don't make me beg for it. Now, after this is when we enter a bit of a weird phase with these games. You would think, with the console next being the Wii, oh, of course, these games are gonna be perfect for this console. Naturally, we're gonna have a Mario Golf and Tennis game. No? During the new play control phase of the Wii's life, Nintendo ported Power Tennis to the console. And it's not very good. This was not a game built with motion controls in mind. You swing the Wii Remote to swing the racket, sure, but it more so feels like a swing is simply activating a button press instead, and it just doesn't really feel all that good. It's functional, don't get me wrong, and hey, the new widescreen is nice, but it's not a version I would recommend. There is a brand new tutorial sequence here, though, explaining how the new controls work, so... That, that's something. Eh, I mean, really, Mario Golf would have fared a whole lot better, but considering this whole new play control thing barely lasted even a year, it doesn't seem like Toadstool Tour would have ever stood a chance. But when Nintendo fails, leave it to Capcom, I guess. Instead of Mario Golf, Camelot would give us We Love Golf, published by Capcom. It's... It, it, it's just what Mario Golf would have been on the Wii without the Mario characters and the addition of motion controls. So if you really liked Plum, Harry, and Maple from Mario Golf 64, this is basically the same thing, it's just the human characters. And it's... It's okay, the controls work decently, but it doesn't really feel like you're swinging the club one-to-one. -one. You kind of just pull back the controller just enough so these symbols will cross each other, and then you swing when the next set of symbols cross over each other. And, and that's it, it doesn't feel one-to-one, -one. it once again feels like you're just activating button presses. All while a sentient Wii remote yells at you the entire time. Guard your back, Point me down. Hold A or B. Oh boy, that's exciting. Similar to the Hot Shots golf game of before, I know many golf games tend to play similarly, but it's bizarre playing something that feels and looks like Mario without actually being Mario. And since Capcom is the one who published this one, not Nintendo, there's actually some unlockable costumes for a load of Capcom characters. Apollo Justice, Ryu, Jill Valentine. This is the best part of the game. For those who are in a need of a Mario Golf game on this console, you do have a few other options, but I think this one is the one that's gonna fit that bill the best. And on the topic of weird golf games, check this out. Mobile Golf, a pseudo-sequel to Mario Golf GBC that was Japanese exclusive until recently when we got a fantastic English fan translation. Incredible. All right, so follow me here. Late in the tail end of the Game Boy Color's life, like months before the GBA released late, Nintendo put out the Mobile Game Boy Adapter, which would allow players to connect to compatible mobile phones and essentially just go online. And this was for both Game Boy Color and Advance. You could race other players in Mario Kart Super Circuit. Of course, you had a slew of options in Pokemon Crystal. It seemed like only two dozen games had some functionality with this device, but the most interesting one to me is rather than making a direct follow-up to Mario Golf, Camelot simply reused the engine and filled it with a ton of new content. And it's not just more of the same Mario Golf experience that the last game brought us. There's entire modes here that the Mario Golf game didn't see. Like you have this one mode where you're aiming between these pillars that are all set up, and even the mini golf mode that was also in Golf 64. Seeing all of this new content and otherwise forgotten characters is really cool. And what's extra cool is in the original release, some of the characters were unlockable only after connecting to the internet. And in that fan translation, the unlock conditions have been modified, so you can access a bulk majority of the content without ever needing to worry about that pesky internet connection. Some of the menus that were based around said online functionality are still here, and it's something that we can't experience nowadays. It's just kind of here taunting us. But other than that, the full experience is here. Good on you, Mark Max, putting in the good work and doing what Nintendo won't do themselves. And then there's that weird phase I mentioned earlier. You know, with the 3DS, we started getting some regular releases again. We got Mario Tennis Open and Mario Golf World Tour, and then fast forward to the Switch, we got Mario Tennis Aces and Mario Golf Super Rush. I'm not gonna say these games are bad right out of the gate, I don't think that's fair to those titles, but it's very clear that this whole era is very different than what we were used to on the N64 and GameCube. And yes, Ultra Smash also happened, 
Mario Tennis Open is, is so boring. They somehow managed to remove all skill from the gameplay. Now you'll regularly see these color spots pop up on the field, and each color correlates to a specific shot that's also indicated on the touchscreen. I know it's possible to resist the temptation to do so, but the gameplay loop now is you kind of just run up to the spot, tap the area on the touchscreen that's glowing, and, and there you go. That's, that's the game now. There are some neat minigames. Uh, the Mii customization is kind of cute, but there's no RPG mode in sight, so uh, who, who, who really cares? This is a pretty dire experience, honestly. It's a functional game, and I'll give the game credit, I guess, but coming from the previous games, what a massive downgrade. And that's doubly so in Ultra Smash. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, you want me to go on this big old mega rant about this game like everybody else does? Quite frankly, I'd rather give this game as little time as possible. It is easily one of the laziest games in the Mario franchise. I would dare call it trash. And I mean, there's no opening cutscenes in these games either. This was a telltale sign that these titles were destined to fail. But then, what about the golf outing on the 3DS? There's Mario Golf World Tour, and this is the best game in the series. Oh god, yeah, that, ooh, that, that whiplash really hits like a truck. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that Camelot must have felt really bad for how lazy Tennis Open was, because they overloaded the hell out of World Tour. You know that discrepancy between Mario Power Tennis and Toadstool Tour when it comes to creativity? You flip that on the 3DS, and that's World Tour and Open. The controls are as tight as they've ever been, the course design is all over the place with these bright and vibrant colors and unique landscapes like underwater. There's a bunch of proper Mario-themed locations, like a full-blown Donkey Kong Country Returns course. A bunch of great new whole celebration animations for each character. A massive challenge mode with over 100 different challenges to go for. Something all of these games should have done, honestly. And there was even paid DLC that brought back the six courses from Golf 64. Four of them do use the old layouts with a new Super Mario Bros. and Mario Galaxy art style, which is kinda strange, because the first two are back in their full glory with the original art style and the original music. That's fantastic! And while there's no RPG mode here and that is kinda missed, we do have the Castle Club instead, a quasi-story mode where you take your me, throw on some fancy outfits, and just do some good old fashioned golfing. There's like a world map that you can travel to access all of the courses, I, I guess by definition it's an RPG, but I'm, I'm not gonna say it is. And at the time when this game was new, there were even a ton of weekly online tournaments that featured a wide range of different modes and rule sets, and participating in them is what gave you the costumes that were based off of a bunch of Nintendo consoles. They actually released a game with an online component and managed to keep things interesting for months after the release. This isn't a subtle jab at the current state of golf and tennis at all. World Tour, man. Camelot killed it with this one, far and away my favorite Mario Golf game yet. And I would also say this is one of the finest examples of post-launch game support Nintendo has ever done. So what the hell happened on the Switch? Mario Tennis Aces and Mario Golf Super Rush. What an oddball pairing we got here. I know this isn't the most controversial opinion out there, but while these games aren't necessarily bad, you could have a lot of fun with them, you can tell that this Camelot just doesn't have the same dedication to quality of the Camelot a few years prior. Each one provides a brand new game-altering gimmick. Tennis has a new slowdown mechanic that, combined with either defense or offense with new power shots, leads to some really epic 1v1 moments. And in golf, the traditional putting process has been changed up with a brand new meter, this ring system for gauging your shot's distance, and the option to play with multiplayer golfers at the same time and run after your ball after hitting it, and you gotta, you gotta sit there and watch everyone else finish their shot, even if you're playing with computer players. Oh. The changes done to tennis and aces are undoubtedly better. I would argue it is the best a Mario Tennis game has felt yet. And to be fair, in Super Rush, when you're not messing around with all these new tweaks implemented and just boil it down to the classic golf experience that we're all used to, it is still a really fun game. It's all that new stuff that kinda sucks. The sport of tennis was always a more competitive and frantic game anyway. The dynamic with the intense risk and reward power shot system here with the slow-mo meter, god it damn near feels like a fighting game at times, it's amazing. As for golf though, I, I don't know man, I can tell a lot of this effort was to speed up the process, but for this sport, 
I always figured it was supposed to be slower and more tactical, so a lot of these changes just didn't make sense to me. I always valued seeing how my opponents would take their shots to see if there was anything that I can do differently. When it's just a non-stop mad dash to the hole for every single hole, I don't care what happens, just do the furthest shot in a straight line, book it to where it landed, and then you rinse and repeat and maybe you win, maybe you won't, I don't know, have fun I guess. Keep the rules simple, take a stroll through New Donk City, and Super Rush is still a blast. The Mario Golf part, not so much the Super Rush part. The biggest problem that plagues these two games is that there's just not a whole lot to do in them. You can play offline and online. That's basically it. All of those quirky modes we got in the previous games, they're mostly gone. Super Rush has this brand new Battle Golf mode, which doesn't really have a whole lot of staying power in my opinion. There's only two maps, most of the games play out the same way in my experience, but clearly they thought it was going to be a big deal because the opening cutscene is like all based on that one mode. They put all of their bets on that one mode and then didn't do much with it. It's weird. It's just very weird. And then over time, after launch, Ace has received a bunch of fun modes, like the returning ring mode. But even still, the previous games had a lot more to offer. At launch, it was a lot more dire than it is now. We do have story modes in both games though, hearkening back to the old Game Boy games. Except not. The story mode in Super Rush is dreadful. You play as your me and you go up the ranks by doing the same thing over and over again. It is so boring and repetitive. At least in the Game Boy games, you have the charm of being in this academy with a bunch of other humans, but now you're just like this one guy amidst a bunch of Mario enemies. It's just... Uh, it's, it's, it's not good. It's not good, and then you got the cross-country section where there are a whole bunch of holes available in like an open world, and you have a limited set of shots to make them all, with terrible terrain changes and a bunch of wind BS. Oh my god, it is so bad. If I never do this again for the rest of my life, I will not be upset by it. The story mode in tennis is still a bit rough, but it is way better. Essentially, it is more of a series of missions set up on a world map. I appreciate that gameplay loop a whole lot more. And the story is like, this evil tennis racket is mind controlling all of your friends because it's been awakened from its slumber in like this tomb by Wario and Waluigi, and now you have to travel all the different lands and find these special stones to conceal its power. It is dumb. It is so, so dumb, and that is exactly what I want. It is still repetitive, but it is way more in line with what I think a story mode should be in a game that doesn't really need one. Then we get to the whole conversation of Nintendo releasing a game with content blatantly held back just so they can give us updates months down the line. I mean, we're even seeing this with Switch Sports, Mario's not the only culprit here, releasing with a sport being hyped up to release later on. But I don't know, man, it's just the time we live in now. I'm not that big of a fan, but it is what it is. I still think the approach of overloading us with content and rewarding us with extras, like in World Tour, is the better approach, but I'm not a multi-billion dollar company, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. And especially if you look back at the update history of Mario Tennis Aces, because, like, they clearly had no idea what they were doing. Roughly a year after the game's launch is when they dropped an opening cutscene. It wasn't there at the start, but a year later, oh hey, cool, now I know what the story is instead of just a bunch of text boxes. And we had... Just the most high-quality voice editing to boot. Luigi! I feel like that's a voice line from like 10, 15 years ago. Good job, good job. It's the laziest thing I've ever seen in my life. The best thing, the best thing I can say that the Switch has provided these two sports is how fast Mario Golf Super Rush boots from the Switch's menu. There you go, that's it. That's it, the game is now loaded. Well, how, how, how is that possible? That's magic. But when all is said and done, while it is very easy to go on this hate train of saying that the modern games are the worst in the franchise, I would argue the opposite. The 3DS and the Switch are where you can find some of the best experiences the golf and tennis games have to offer. I know, very, very hot take, I guess. Now, obviously, we've only talked about two sports thus far, golf and tennis. But to be fair, this is where Mario and crew spend most of their time. But now, let's shake things up a little bit. Let's add two more balls to the equation. GameCube was truly the haven for Mario sports games, man. Not only did Camelot grace us with great golf and tennis games, but now we have baseball and soccer in the mix too. Or football, if any of you Europeans out there feel the need to correct me. Lord knows Nintendo felt the need to put football in the titles over there. Uh, j just so nobody got confused, I guess? They, they probably guess uh, a European's gonna look at Mario Strikers and just uh, be completely lost. I have no idea what that could be. 
But hey, it doesn't even matter. This isn't dinky old Mario soccer in line with what golf and tennis are. This is Super Mario Strikers, dammit. Your favorite plumbers are gonna die. Next Level Games, the team responsible for NHL Hits Pro and eventually, a uh, ticket to ride on Xbox 360. Huh. Took up the task of taking the world of Mario characters, putting them on a big soccer field, and making them incredibly violent first and good at kicking around a ball second. Dude, the level of intensity in these games is fantastic. Passing the ball around to teammates to power it up, items being handed out for being ruthless on the field, and shoving your opponents into an electric fence, oh my god. Charging up these ultra shots in a glorious flashy fashion before, ah, just shooting it into the goal like it's a shotgun blast. Super Mario Strikers is one of the best multiplayer experiences you can find in my opinion. It's bombastic and over the top, but it's still very easy to understand, making it very accessible. In this first GameCube entry, there's not much more to it. It's not like we're inundated with a bunch of modes and options here. What you see is what you get. Just an intense time, either solo or with friends. God, even the artwork is incredible. These hard colors, bright lighting, insane line work. It is so, so good. The style in these games is unparalleled. I guess like the only thing I can think of is like Sonic Riders, kinda? That GameCube era, man. We were edgy for like 20 minutes and this artwork shows. And that level of intensity is just upped even more so in the Wii sequel, Charged. Oh my god, this opening video is incredible. You would think all of these characters genuinely want to kill each other. This is a side of the Mushroom Kingdom you can't get anywhere else. And I love it so much. Dude, Bowser with the red shell. That, that's all I need, man. It's so, so cool on him. In essence, this is more of the same, but there's a lot of small things added here and there to add to the complexity. All the characters now have unique specials, you have a whole lot more freedom in what your team consists of, all of the fields now have additional gimmicks, and that whole charge thing? You were able to charge shots before, of course, but now, by passing the ball enough, it starts to glow white, and if you can nail a power shot when it's in that form, you can go for upwards of five points in a single attempt where it is then up to the goalie to use the Wii Remote's pointer to block the shots. Yeah, this is why I prefer the original game, honestly. Charged does so much, so well. The music is sick, Waluigi does crotch chops, the title screen is a zoom in on Mario's crotch, there is so much crotch in this game. But the overall gameplay loop is just about constantly passing and hoping to nail a super. Just keep doing that. And in my opinion, the simplicity of the original allowed for more options in terms of strategy. Plus, you can also play as a weird robot in that one? Not really sure what that's about, we kinda just let it happen and we didn't ask enough questions. Super Team, basically the game's final boss, which can then become playable. I, I, don't, I don't know, these things are just kinda here. These games are also notable for being the introduction of Daisy getting to truly shine. You see, before this, it was all about, hi, I'm Daisy, but now, she's here to say that, while also being incredibly badass. This is why she's become my favorite princess. At the time of this video, the newest entry, Mario Strikers Battle League, is just about to release, but it's looking like it's gonna be really good. You can combine two different types of fields at the same time, there's customization options, you have this mechanic where you can bump your teammate forward to get a head up on the opponents, it's really great. And then Rosalina's here, <laughs> that's even greater. Provided the end result is not a monumental screw-up, this will easily be one of the best multiplayer experiences on the Switch despite the fact that Daisy isn't in the launch roster, so if she isn't post-game DLC, I'm gonna be very mad. Around the time of the original Mario Strikers, Next Level was also set to work on a volleyball wrestling hybrid under the name Super Mario Spikers. There's not too much known about this one outside of the general concept, but from what's managed to make it out into the public, it looks like it would've been pretty cool. Here's some footage of Yoshi body slamming himself. It would've been great. And then we have Baseball, courtesy of Namco, with Superstar Baseball on GameCube and Super Sluggers on the Wii. Do you think anybody was confused about what that second game was without the sport in the title? Super Sluggers. Oh god, what are they slugging? Oh! That's a baseball. Jaggers. Jaggers! And just like the other sports games thus far, we start off with fantastic opening cutscenes. Camelot was such a trendsetter here, and it's for the best, honestly. There is no better way to get hyped up for these games than with these little movies, they're fantastic. Look at this, Luigi almost dies, but... <gasps> he actually caught the ball, and the crowd goes wild! Woohoo! 
So yes, this is in fact baseball with a very arcadey vibe. The biggest thing being this power meter that you can use both as the pitcher and the batter, giving all of the main characters a unique shot depending on when you use it. You got plenty of themed fields to play in, bringing in a whole bunch of gimmicks. You have items that you can use as well. A lot of mini games that all play off basic baseball skills like pitching power and running between bases. I love those. This is exactly what you think about when you would hear Mario and baseball. We have no aura of death like we have in Mario Strikers, but it's, it, it's fine. And these rosters too, oh my god, they're gigantic. The fact that we had to resort to the Piantas and Nokis from Sunshine, the baby Donkey Kong is here, you know, from Yoshi's Island DS, and that's it. In general, like the titles before it, both of these play almost exactly the same. It's just that in the sequel, all of the pitching and batting is done with semi-decent motion controls. They're not terrible, but they are better than new play control Mario Power Tennis and I, I, I don't know, maybe worse than Wii Sports Baseball? Uh, there, there's the middle ground, I guess. Both these games also have single player modes where you run around a little map and play a bunch of different games to build up a sizable team to take down Bowser. And all the teams have these cute little names too. There's the Yoshi Islanders, Mario Sunshines, Peach Monarchs. Somebody got paid for this. The mode is very similar in both games, including most of the characters speaking full English. That's very bizarre. Fortune Street did this too, and I, every, every time it happens, every time a full sentence comes out of these characters' mouths, it's very unsettling. Things are slightly more complex with the overworld puzzle solving and super sluggers, but I don't know, I can't help but feel like these were pretty forced. These single player modes in these sports games only work if you either play it straight and make it a full blown RPG, or you give us an absurd save the world plot like in Aces. The stuff we have here in baseball, it's too middle of the road to really be seen as anything interesting. Oh, be sure to trace the lines on this Wario sign. Why are we doing this? Thankfully, when we're not playing basic old baseball or diving into some of the minigames, we do also have the Toy Field mode, where instead of playing traditional baseball, it's all a mad scramble between four players to land the ball on these special panels on the field. You get a bunch of items and point multipliers. It's great. I love this one. There is no shortage of options for multiplayer fun in these titles. It's just the single player that kind of sucks. And I do hope that once Battle League comes and goes, we get a return to baseball as well. A modern take on this formula with some new tweaks here or there would be really cool. And make sure Daisy's there at launch or so help me God. And also the menacing red dry bones too. This is clearly the most evil thing in the roster and I wanna see it again. It deserves a chance to be better. And now that covers the four main sports, golf, tennis, baseball, and soccer. And no matter what, at the end of the day, these games do offer a lot of really good things. You got really great opening cutscenes, you got arcadey fun with a lot of Mario charm, and just excellent multiplayer offerings in general. Not every game, but in general. I mean, hell, even stupid old Ultra Smash can be fun. Over drinks with friends and you just complain about the game the whole time. It's fun. It's not what they were going for, but it, it could be fun. But, of course, we do have some of those stragglers as well that you don't really see too often. Of course, we have the Mario and Sonic at the Olympics games games. I do think those technically count, but I've already covered them in the past, so we're not going to talk about them here. Let's, uh, let's really do something that you wouldn't see coming. Let's talk about Square Enix. What? Mario Hoops 3-on-3 three three by S Square Enix. God, what? Three on three basketball for the DS. Strangely enough, the only dedicated Mario sport game to hit the console. Okay. I always figured a Mario tennis game where the court took up both screens made all the sense in the world, but like I said before, what do I know, I guess? I only have good ideas, not enough money to make these games. Let's get Squeenix to do a basketball game instead. The big gimmick here is doing all of your main actions on the touchscreen, oh joy. Swiping the screen to attempt stealing a ball, tossing items onto the floor, or going in for a jump shot, and tapping the screen a whole bunch to dribble. Like, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot of tapping. Probably destroyed a lot of DS demo units at Walmart, I can tell you that much. And it's... okay. Once you get past the novelty of this even being on the DS, it gets pretty old pretty quickly, since every game just revolves around you dribbling the ball a whole bunch of times on these question mark blocks to accumulate some points, so you can make over 100 points in a single shot. <laughs> Why? That's so excessive! It has the perfect amount of Mario charm, like there's a stage where you use PD Piranha as the hoop, and that's just fun. But I feel like the point system is just a bit too nonsensical to have any lasting power. And then you got Final Fantasy characters playable here too? 
okay, why not? I mean, Square Enix did make the game, so it makes sense, but also doesn't make sense at the same time. A ninja, a white and black mage, Cactuar. This is a fever dream. I'm playing the game right now, and I still don't think it's real. And then Nintendo said, hey, do it again, but with even more sports in one package on the Wii. Mario Sports Mix. Right off the bat, uh, well, not, not literally, there's no baseball bats in this one. Things are looking up. An opening cutscene, thank goodness. Now you have all of your favorite characters finding themselves in a white empty void to play a variety of sports. I guess it would be pretty difficult to properly convey all four of the included sports in anything but a white void, so in that essence, job well done. But yes, we have four sports in one game. The returning basketball, volleyball, hockey, and dodgeball. And why these four sports specifically? Well, because the selling point to Sports Mix is simply providing a fun arcadey experience rather than trying to infuse these sports with as much Mario juice as possible. And in the case of basketball, you can still rack up coins to get more points when scoring, but it's a lot less severe, and that change alone makes us a much better time. Just imagine all four of these games with the motion controls that you would expect. That's, that's what we have here. And like before, it's, it, it's okay. The traditional modes offer a safe, basic game with some of the courts offering just enough of a gimmick to spice things up, and when you want to go a little extra, each sport also has an associated minigame in the party mode. You get to dunk fruit in Petey's mouth, dodge ba bombs volleying balls in a co-op rhythm game, this stuff is pretty cool. God, there's, e there's even a boss fight against a behemoth king, like what? What in the holy hell is going on here, Square Enix? This is one of the most insane things I ever witnessed. Thank you. However, single player is terrible. There is like a story about this comet falling from the sky and having crystals that have sports balls in them. That's dumb and amazing, but it all just results in a basic tournament mode, which is painfully easy. And I mean just disgustingly mopping the floor with opponents in every single sport easy. And you have to go through said mode with all four sports in order to unlock everything. It doesn't matter if you already unlocked a court or character in hockey, you gotta go through it all over again in volleyball, and then the remaining two sports. You gotta go through four things to full completion in order to beat the game. That's terrible. What is it, Sonic Heroes? Luckily, there is an unlock everything code if you just want to get in there with some friends immediately with all of the options, so I would just recommend doing that and bypassing the story mode altogether. You can play as a slime in this one, damn it, and that should not be held back from the wanting public. I mean, if your choice of teammate is either a damn slime or NBA legend Rick Mahorn, I, well, I mean, I think your choice is obvious. Look at those rep points. Poor old Rick doesn't stand a chance. Oh god. Oh god. I always forget this happened. You really want to see a fever dream? Well here, NBA Street V3 and SSX on tour for the GameCube. Oh, featuring featuring the Mario Brothers and Peach for some reason. I guess this was in the same vein of putting Link in Soul Calibur. You just have this big third-party game, put a Nintendo character in there. It'll sell more, I guess. So, why not put Mario into real-life sports games? What we got here is more or less the same title that you can find on other consoles, just with a couple additional characters and like a new stage here or there. There's a bunch of sound effects and SSX on tour. No. Th this is a sin. These all look like mediocre PC mods, but I assure you, I, I don't like it, but I can assure you this is real. And amazingly enough, this wasn't really enough to swing the pendulum in Nintendo's favor at the time and sell more GameCubes. My God, I'm stunned. This edge that Nintendo tried to have in the mid-2000s, man, they gave Mario a tribal tattoo. Nothing was off limits here. The games may be painfully easy in single player, but I think I still gotta hand it to Mario Hoops and Sports Mix in the Basketball 1v1 department here. These real-life sports games look like you just have humans versus humans in Mario costumes. I don't, I don't like it. If anything, I just gotta give Square Enix credit for managing to get a decent final product out of four sports in a single game. It's not amazing, but if you ever find yourself in a multiplayer Wii session with some friends, this isn't a bad choice. So when Camelot, the head honchos, tried to do the same thing on 3DS with Mario Sports Superstars, oh boy was I ever excited! Ah! Holy sh**, huh. this game is bad. You see, you would think, oh wow, we're getting golf, tennis, baseball, and soccer in one package? And there's horse racing in here too? Oh my god, yes, finally, this is a dream come true. <sighs> it, it's just it's just the five sports games and that's it. Like, devoid of variety, options, and Mario theming. 
that's that's really it. It's just the sports. There is technically a mini game per sport, but they are hidden in like the training menu for some reason. The golf and tennis modes are fine. You're losing a lot of the options you had in the core titles that were already on the console. And as it turns out, Camelot can't make good soccer and baseball games. You see, the problem is when you tell Mario fans you're getting those sports in a brand new game finally, people want more of what they were getting on the home consoles. This is just the most basic adaptations of these sports you could find. It's dreadful. Oh, but what about the one shining asterisk of the bunch? Horse racing. The one thing the Mario franchise had clearly been missing all this time. Well, the horse designs are kinda cute. Oh, uh, hey, look at this, a first person mode. It's like I'm really on a cartoon horse. I think it's obvious that this is another byproduct of the early Amiibo craze like Amiibo Festival was. You see, alongside the game's release was a brand new set of Amiibo cards for each character and each sport. And hey, made total sense at the time. Sports trading cards are totally a thing. Let's capitalize on it. And then they reused DDR Mario mix art for Bowser on the soccer card. This was doomed to fail from the start. Plus, the in-game amiibo breakout mode is terrible. This whole, this whole thing is just a non-stop onslaught of bad. You dare make a game where Pink Gold Peach is one of the few unlockable characters and you expect me to be excited about that? At the tail end of the 3DS's life, there was a bit of an aura of Nintendo simply trying to fill out the schedule as we got closer to the release of the Switch. And while it's not as insulting as Ultra Smash was, this is another example of what I meant when I said earlier that the Camelot from the early days was a whole lot different than the Camelot we have here. But at the end of the day, with all of these sports games finally wrapped up, yeah, you know, I think this whole Mario sports concept was a massive success. In modern times, we certainly got issues to be concerned about like Super Rush's post-launch content strategy and Battle League's glaring omission of Daisy. but in the grand scheme of things, these games do exactly what they need to. They take the characters from the Mario universe, throw them into an arcadey sports atmosphere with a good dose of Mario influence with items and gimmicks aplenty, and just give us these really fun games to play single player and especially multiplayer. And clearly, with Battle League, this trend won't be stopping anytime soon. So whether or not the upcoming outings are fantastic, just average, or even flat out bad, this will forever be one of the best things to come out of the Mushroom Kingdom. They're also essentially totally responsible for all the personality that Daisy and Waluigi have, so... Yeah, I think it's all a net positive. I know for many people out there, sports video games aren't necessarily your thing. And honestly, same here. But when Mario gets involved and we get overloaded with options, there's a ton of Mario charm, just a great overall multiplayer experience. Oh, I'm on board 100%. I love that stuff. I loved going through all the games that have come out thus far, and I am very excited to see whatever happens in the future. I think, uh, I think this was a good call for me to go through this whole comprehensive look. I had a lot of fun, and I think I covered everything. Uh, no, okay, wait, sorry, I forgot. There is one. There's, uh, also Luigi's Hammer Toss. It was an early LCD watch game that came out, I want to say, 1990, and when you boot it, it plays... It apparently plays La Cucaracha. Because of course it does.